found him. Hundred percent. Yep. Mm. Okay. Uh, what else from Penta? What do they What do they have up their sleeve? Do you think? I think they should stick with. I think this comfort that they had a couple weeks ago, like you were mentioning, yeah. this is what they were drafting like two, three weeks ago, and yeah. they were they were kind of up on the rise, and people were like, oh damn, Penta, who are these guys? Mm. So I think this is what they should be doing. These like heroes, like we were saying, like Sanking DNZ is most popular, but then they switched it up. They put them on the Kunkka. So I think just like having these super comfort heroes like that. Okay. Well, AG is still worried about the Bruce, so that's gone. Uh, and the terror blade for Penna. Oh, and, and again, if you look toward the end of the draft, like what I liked so much about the draft a couple weeks ago was that that sort of flex pick variation where you had heroes like Kunkka that they played in multiple roles, and even when you saw all five of the heroes, you still weren't 100% sure what yep. their lanes were going to be. I think that that's part of what forces those errors by EG where you end up sacking the Dragonite without a clear plan to get him back in the game. It's an Earth Spirit ban. Okay. Okay. So Tusk is left. I love the fact that you were, you were leaning in towards the TV and, the, that one's hard. and squinting to see. Yeah, that, that one's a hard one to see. That's that easy for me. I can get that one. Oh, it's really? some of the dark ones. Like, I can't so tell what that is second down. They after took break. out the Life Stealer instead. Can't All see. Right. What is it? Okay. They took out uh, Bruce Chaos Knight and uh, oh, Life Stealer. Yeah, 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 yeah CK Life yeah. Stealer. And they still yeah. take the sanking right away anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So they instead of identifying what what gave the Life Stealer the game, they've just gotten rid of it so they can stop, because they might have something else that can help it, right? So I, think it, right back I think it was one of the two they had to take out of, take yeah. out this time around. Yeah. So uh, now Tusk is left ignored. Okay, and they've gone back to the PL, but this time with a Bane. Because Bane was banned in the yeah. first three the last time. Right. And that, okay. I mean, Bane is a hero that we've been seeing banned a lot, yep. because it does that impact in the laning phase. Good misery hero as well. Yeah. Actually, one of one of my favorite misery heroes, to be honest, from back Bane? when he was playing years ago. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. He's, he's really I'm very disruptive, disruptive in the lane. Yeah. Oh, I still he's... have more memorable Rubik games from Misery than anything else. Now, I, I, I still my favorite Misery games are always when he's just a lane bully. I think I think that's when he's at his best. <laughs> when he just he's he's just like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this enemy core and, and I'm, I'm gonna just gonna ruin his game. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin his game. Now again, you see the, the left the track. Mm. Again, a little bit of flex value coming yeah. out from Penta early on. They're not sure whether the flesh is going to be core support. This, I mean, this was a... It's just kind of, I don't want to call it meta, but it was hmm. it was kind of part of the decision-making in the draft process three months ago. Five months ago, even. Even back to TI, some of the teams were already doing this kind of like, our first two are uh, flexible. Oh, no, this is all... Oh, oh, but, yeah. but in the last couple of weeks, it seems that teams have started to move away from it, and now it's back again. It, but it always does that. It oscillates. Yeah. I, like, I remember when I started, when I, I did a video breaking it down uh, exactly at the time that you're talking about, and Milk like, gave me a ton of crap. He's like, this is something that we've been doing since yeah, back no, in Dota no, 1. I mean, and like, and oh, he, admittedly, right. he did say, yeah, that they have been doing it way, way back, and yeah. it, it comes in and out of favor. But this seems to have changed in the last few I weeks. Can't I believe I just said Jacob is right on a stream, but uh, oh, wow. you, you, you take, take that back immediately. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. EG has a lot of fear of against what Penta was playing before. I see what you did there. A lot of fear. Yeah. You came on the screen. Now it's not the word I was going to use, but it just came right in there. <laughs> I know. So they do take out that Kunkka. And I I actually wanted to talk about the Kunkka a bit too, because we were talking mm. about how PL, he goes in and he shreds, right? In, yes. in these fights. Yes. But if there's a Kunkka boat on top and you can survive it, then oh, you start the finding out which that real PL is with all that AoE. So that was actually, we were talking about how good uh, Ark was at finding that PL in all these instances of teamfights, and I think that helped a lot. What do you make of it? So what do you make of these phase two bans from Penta? Uh, the Tinker and Nyx bans, not the direction that I necessarily expected them to go. I think they want the OD again. Okay, okay. That's, that's what I was curious about. I mean, and after all this, the, the Elder Titan's still on the table. And Ooh, okay, I like this a lot. I like this a lot. EG are going to take the Tusk off the table. And yes, this is the hero that he broke into the pro scene with at the Frankfurt Major in 2015. And I'm much happier seeing a Tusk Bane duo than a Dazzle plus anything. Because like yes. I said yesterday, I'm not crazy about Dazzle. It can have some moments of sh like success and everything, but I'm not crazy about it. In, in the metas, in the metas that um, I've liked Dazzle, it's been uh, it's been the metas where I felt like Dazzle had a huge influence on the lanes. Like if you remember how Fly used to push it, I, I, play I, it in the, only in the person, dual offlane. Right? It's only Fly, but right? But he would he played in a dual offlane and he'd use Shadow Wave to like just keep that enemy safe lane carry mm. uh, last thing under tower at all times. I don't feel like in this meta the Dazzle games that I've seen that he's had that big impact on the lanes. Yeah. Okay, so this is an old. Is oh, old look at this! It, you were right, dude. Fog. You you called throwing this. it back to what they like to play. Absolutely, yeah. and, and and in team fact, team fight. Team fight. Yeah, bam. You not only did you said go back to what they like, but you said focus on the team fight, and that's exactly what they've done. I think that's the best way to play against teams. Like, I'm sure Penta's not like we're better than EG. Like right away coming into this, they might be like, hey, we have a good shot versus them. But they, that's that's one of the aspects you want to take versus teams that you think maybe you have a slighter edge yeah. versus you. You take these team fight heroes, and if you do well in your lanes, then naturally. 
it should work out. But it's it's all, I, I really do have to go back to this. It's all about having a team identity. How do we win? What do we do well? When yeah. do we feel confident in these games? Because it is a mental game. It's momentum. And Pentas say, look, we're a team. We like to win fights. So I'll ask you another question just because we, we had Darks here picked on. Do you like Darks here? I don't like Darks no, here. Not at all in this meta, no. Uh, but I think it's I think it's a hero that 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 can have a really good impact. But I think that um, it, I thought Dar uh, Darks here derives most of his value from being very self sufficient as an offlaner. And in this in this meta where we have all of these shenanigans with all the crazy pulls in the offlane, you kind of don't need Darks here. I just feel like a lot of his value gets lost. His, his Iron Shell just feels super weak to yeah, your, level, to your level 5 and 7. It's like, the level 1 and 2 Iron Shell does absolutely nothing. Well, his scales have all, his, his spells have all, have always scaled kind of poorly. It doesn't yeah. help that Vacuum cooldown gets nerfed 37 times. Yeah, at least now they have the they have the Wombo combo, which is, that's the only way I like to see Darkseer. Is yes, you have exactly. like, massive stun combos on top of it. And Sanking Darkseer is a classic old school one to just defend tier 1s, defend towers, you can just decimate a fight. If you're Penta, do you actually double back for Tiny? And they tiny play becomes it, though. A, uh, yeah, That's the one thing that confuses me. They it's don't so pick it. It's so good here, though. They just don't pick it. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I can agree, but I just don't, I don't see these guys playing it much. They ban it. Like, they ban it first two versus some teams. That's what the thing that, like, scares me. I'm thinking they might go for... Is, okay. It was like Lycan was ignored. Okay. All right. There so is. they're gonna. All right. All right. All right. RTZ, say, yeah. forty-nine and fourteen on Lycan in competitive play. This is, I believe, the and highest win percentage of any player hero combination bar and the Universe Void. And, and when I, it wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah. And I was gonna say that I was gonna, I like I was literally like it was out of my mouth as they were picking it because Lycan versus Darkseer. I love this matchup because you yeah. just sustain through those ion shells. You do not care. So, okay, so if it's not going to be a tiny... Another hero I don't like in this meta, but I think fits here is maybe Sven. Sven, yeah, especially with Darks here. I think that's the obvious one. Yeah. Okay, all right. Sven's ready. And this is something that, uh, that Penta have run before. Look at that wombo combo, too. We got some triple stuns coming out on Penta with the vacuum. There is a tusk, though, that throws a bit of a, a, a change up here, because... Now, if you do want to do those combos, if this Tusk is in a good position, you can just really change the tides of those. I hate that I'm going to be in this situation again, though, at the end of this draft, that I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be a, in a situation where I have a bunch of heroes on one side that I don't particularly like, but I got a team that they go well together and knows how to play. I hate Sven right now. I hate Sven right now. But, uh, but I think he's really good versus both Bio and Lycan. Yes. He has his moments. It's, if you're ahead. I mean, sure, there's, that's the beauty of Dota, of course, but... You know, yeah, if PL's super yeah. ahead of a Sven, then Sven's bad versus PL, but if Sven's really good over, like, a little bit over a PL, then PL's not good for Sven. So they do take out that OD anyway, from EG, kind of expected. That's a real, yeah, that's a really good ban. Just from the bans that Penta showed, I think you, like, kind of have to. So what's your, who's your mid now as Penta? What are you, do you think go they can, I think they do you think they don't push this lush mid? So they, they ban the CK, didn't they? I don't really, think, really I don't think they will, but I think it's still an option. Yeah, I, I, I actually think with this lineup that you don't need to commit to Coralesh. Well, they've still got the Omni. Uh, yeah, but you're already, Darkseer is already your three. They didn't ban Medusa either, did they? I mean, you could do something totally stupid and go back for Korkunka. <laughs> yeah, they, they do That's like just it. insane. <laughs> no, because it's banned. Oh yeah, yeah they banned it there. Banned okay. Second okay. Place this okay. time, wasn't it, by G? Okay. Know, with the inch. I don't know. What about the tiny? See, we've talked about that mm. though, and 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 they just don't run it. Um, uh, no, Oliver's played it only once, but on still. Table. I I so like. I mean, it. nothing if you feel, that he if you plays. If you feel confident in it at all, I, I I so really like it. But nothing he plays is left on the table that he plays often. Like, it's either banned or already picked in there. Like, the CK, the Lifestealer, the Lycan. Those, those are three of his top heroes. And our so he's going to have to play something slightly out of his push? will. Oh, Fuck, yeah. help me out here, man. I'm thinking. I don't know. I, I, I think we said the ones that were, like, the most obvious ones. Mm -hmm. They're, like, they're still genuinely thinking about it. I think they're still debating what they want to do, who they want to call. I guess you could, Queen, but she has... Yeah. She is so yeah. bad. Ooh. 
Oh, well, God, of there, course. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. That's all right. good versus a Lycan. I'm down with it. And they even picked it against Kingwin a couple weeks. Yeah, this is... Yeah. Okay. They're so really EG. allotting on this Sven, though, on Penta. Is... They are, but I feel like they can... I feel like unless it goes... I, I feel like unless the game goes fairly late, they can win without Sven being super huge. If they execute fights like the way they did in the last game. All right. So where did the EG go for their offlane? Well, the pucks EG now. don't necessarily have to. Okay, they are going to pick a classical yeah. offlaner, and and now you go back to the question of who's playing what. So I guess Sumail is going to be your bat rider. Yeah, yeah. Sumail bat crit tough here. Fear PL not easy not like easy like Yeah, it's a pretty standard, I would think. But if fear PL mid against Timber, side lane <laughs> again. <laughs> I am. I. I. I Put bat uh, mid, dual lane off lane with the PL, like in safe lane. They're gonna. I feel. Gonna throw I feel. Some I feel like boards. I should give you a question that's not related to predicting the I'm outcome done. of this game, but instead that. predicting where they lane again. I think bat's gonna be mid. I think uh, they're gonna, find, gonna be mid. I think they're gonna try to find where the timber is, and they're gonna mm. try to get the bat matchup versus. What does Samal play then? Samal plays bat. I will. Right. Okay. I will give you ten bucks if you're right. I'm so. I. I. That's. That's actually a really impressive call. I mean, sense. Okay. Okay. There's some cash gonna exchange hands or something. Get out of here very quickly. Let's head back to the commentary team for game number two. EG all on the line. Or can Penta claim their place in the semi finals of the lower bracket? Let's find out. Oh, thank you very much, Red Iron. Uh, here we have it. A very exciting game to come Yes, up. it is. And the draw from EG. We're seeing the PL again, but we are seeing this sort of change up in the other cores. We have the, the Lycan and the Bat. And as Fog said, there's uh, a lot of different potential where they could land this because we, we've seen the Samel Bat in the past. And yeah. He can certainly do it. That's all I'm excited for. I just want to see if Fog gets his $10, honestly. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's the real victory of the day here. But Penta looking to close it out. You know? Uh, they're here, they're a very different lineup. I'm I mean, not excited. Who else picks Sven and Darks here in 2018 or in 2017. <laughs> no, they must be I mean, confused. This is, um, I kind of hope it works because we just don't see it, but at the same time, it's it's hard to feel super yep. super confident in these heroes in this this sort of matters. Just see, no one really plays Sven. I think Darkseer and Sven are the two easiest heroes to hate. I would say a surprising amount of people honestly pick Sven, but then it feels like okay. every time you watch a Sven game, it just feels awful because it has to be so precise. Everything has to go so well. You know, you have to blink in, you have to stun, you have to ulti, you have to get this damage off. You're hitting your mask of madness or something, and if anything stops that full initiation from happening, maybe like a snowball or perhaps a nightmare. Go, yeah. Things, you know, they don't go so well. But, but. Our previous game, Penta, they played so well around mm. that life stealer. They enabled him. Yep. They made us all over had this fantastic game. So the question is, can they do it again with what I would say is a much harder hero to make it work? Because if they can, there's other great options. You know, this war cry, it looks amazing. You want to pick this hero. It feels so good against Lycan all his heroes. Or his summons rather. So oh nice play. Oh, there we go. On to misery. Stun into stun. Do they have the damage, though? It doesn't look like they do. They'll turn towards a, uh, the... Uh, oh, tasty target. Oh, it's easy. He's got to be careful. It'll take quite a bit of a punch. I mean, they're both getting brought down quite low. Rotation comes in from crit. Look at the shards out onto DNC. Quick borrow strike to break himself away. They won't quite get kills, uh, but at the least they will be able to secure... Uh, Bounty runes up here still. Misery is looking towards Oliver. Continue to chase down the Sven, and we'll see what sort of lanes do come out of this, because at the moment Sven is up towards the top. Uh, yet to see anyone get themselves to the mid lane, so there's going to be a bit of a free opening for Samel's bat as he has that first wave to himself. RMM will be turning up alongside uh, the Sven, as it seems. So deciding to bring the Sven into this matchup against the bat, and putting the timber saw up towards the top lane. So didn't this, was this the panel along, or is this just get nope, avoiding this is, a certain matchup? Yeah, or? this is definitely um, the way that EG. You know, well, ideally they want the timber saw up yep. against someone who he punishes. So if you're Ark right now, you know you want to punish somebody like the Lycan, or you want to punish the PL. Uh, so he's happy to be in at least one of those two lanes. And EG certainly, I would say, hoping that maybe that it was going to be the timber mid up against the bat. See if they make any sort of rotations, but for now, as long as the Timber doesn't have too many levels, he can't do all too much against either Lycan or PL. Um, Lycan is also certainly the better hero to be up against the Darks here, because you have that natural regen. Uh, at the start, it's not too much, but once he gets second point into the Feral Impulse, he's much like this Timber Saw or this Dragonite, where he's pretty sustainable up against the Iron Shells. Let's see how much Oliver can get out of this mid lane. He does have a lot of backup. Iron Man and Boogie will be there to assist him, so may I that's the help of crit. Yeah, that's a scary combo, man. 
You know, one of these supports gets stuck inside, that little ice shards with all that fire pouring on top yeah. of you, the napalm's raining down. Absolutely, there's a definite potential for kills for EG and Penta make a step in the wrong place. Boogie coming back towards mid with this darks here, so hang on, is this a, well, another bit of a lane switch up? I mean, the Oliver going towards top. Boogie is now in the <laughs> mid lane. I mean, this is... I like how they timed this so that he's right. rotating along with the bounty runes, trying to grab it as they make the lane switches, so at least it's not totally wasted. And he does get it. He's in a bit of trouble there. We'll turn around and get the two-man stun now. Actually, with the help of RMN, it could be Penta to get the kill. They are going to miss the stun from the Lash, but they have the Burrow Strike connection, and Penta, they will get themselves the first bird. Trying to set it up nicely here for Oliver, <laughs> but he can't quite get it. Oh, no, because they were trying to do that. The first bird actually ended up going to EG as Samael picks up the darks here. So that bit of a hesitation, that trying to be nice to the core, uh. it loses them the first blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty brutal. Oh. But it's so important. Like, it's so sure. much gold from the yeah. kill. So uh, it's still worth it, honestly. But yes, extremely <laughs> unfortunate for Penta. Oh and well goodness. played by Samael in the mid. And so that means that, uh, yeah, they rotate again. They got Fear versus the Iron Shell. Very happy. Oh, the biggest and baddest Wolves. Most pro liking game. Silar up top. I, I can understand that. Fear only 26 games, whereas, you know, number two, Arteezy on the team here. And look at that win rate, too. 77 point. I mean, he had a hell of a time with that here on the past. He's but... just a boy that wants to play PL. Yeah. I, I noticed that uh, his Roman numerals, he's a uh, 12, by the way. <laughs> oh, is that? Is that? I wonder if that's what he's going for. But here we have it. Another kill for Penta. Oliver getting himself away. No, he's not. Miz will be able to bring down with the brain set, but does cost him his life. Two for one trade in the favor of Penta. Actually looking towards Arteezy. Have they got the spells to bring him down? They have one stun. I've got the backup of crit once again in this lane. So Arteezy will be Burrow Strike. Crit is there. Arteezy getting low. Snowball to buy him time. Oh, they'll look for the stun, but the doppelganger is out just in time. So Arteezy will keep himself safe though. Crit. Bit of a different story though, with Oliver turning back into the lane, has the stun, they're looking to dive in one more, they needed a couple more, it's not going to be quite enough, Crit will survive, can't oh. quite get the kill, but it will kick in off on that top lane. Yeah, let's say bottom lane, we also still have the Timber Saw versus the Bat Rider, so, okay. Timber so not getting that punish that he wants, yeah. um, so he doesn't even have two points in the reactive, so it doesn't really matter all that much, so he's trying to pressure Sumail, I like that, takes the two points in the chain instead, but Sumail has that early bottle, we've seen this from a lot of offliners lately. You know, especially if you're super mobile or something like this, where you're this bat rider who could just like nuke a wave and then go collect those two bounty runes. It's so much mana back for yourself if you get both of them like that. And obviously the extra gold from the bounty certainly doesn't hurt. 24, 21, and 20. The dire side cores looking very good in the lane so far. So yeah, how much Oliver can catch up in this top lane. As you say, falling behind in CS on the Sven. Uh, putting some more... Focus towards helping him with DNZ and RMN, sticking around. Yeah, SK and the, and the Shrek combo. Got the triple stun. They're still lacking sort of the damage at these levels, especially RTZ now hitting level 5. Having that Misery Bane, there's a lot of chances for RTZ to play himself out of tricky situations. Yeah, it's like uh, they've just uh, been so much more stable on the side of EG. RTZ's just chilling up top, so naturally you're going to get more CS. You know, you don't have to walk around this whole map. And uh, it's a side of Penta that's been more forced in these rotations. There we go. And Z, looking for the opening. There's the Burrow Strike into the Lash Stun. This should be a dead Bane. Is the damage? Yeah, yes, it is. That's Misery down on the Bane. Arteezy will be fine, of course. Is there another kill for Penta? These little kills are definitely going to help them step up, as you say, after sort of this moving around, falling behind on CS. If they can get kills with the new lane setups, it's worth it for Penta. Yeah, but with this setup too, both the supports are uh, engaged up top. You have the Sand King and the Leshrac, so no one's really roaming around, maybe setting up some stacks or something like that. Uh, it doesn't look like... Oh, uh, well, they might be back in time near the Shrine there too to get a couple more. But uh, certainly the economy game here for Penta that we're going to be watching out for. We want to see that Sven explode up as... Oh, uh, yeah. Did they make it here in time? Oh, what gamers. Excellently done. Uh, uh, certainly well planned to come back for the Shrine and get that done. I mean, that's the thing yeah. about Sven. It's all about execution. It's hitting that timing, and you can't miss it, or the game just feels off. Yeah. I mean, he is, is yeah, one of those heroes that can absolutely flash farm if you can get the stacks up. And uh, we'll see if they, they go for any sort of ancient sacking as well. It'll certainly help Oliver propel himself to that point in the mid-game where he can be an incredibly, incredibly dominant force. If he finds the opportunity to move around in the fires, and as we said, that's already going to be quite tricky with the, the kiting and control. 
that you can offer. All those bounty runes. Sumail's almost level seven. Like, and he Before, keeps grabbing yeah, six all of them in. down there. Top lane. I've got DNZ finding the opening onto Crit. Crit's down. So the problem with these two supports, they can certainly help Arteezy if he gets gone on, but if Penta oh. goes on with the combo onto one of them, they're in trouble. And now Arteezy, he's actually overstepped the mark a little bit. He's got a, he has got the stick charges. Stuns there from Oliver to hold him back. Crit now back in, looking to roll forward onto Oliver. Turning up onto this Sven. Can they bring him down? Both tracks across the DNC, but it's actually not going to do anything at all because Arteezy can jump forward. Still looking for Oliver. Iron Man's trying with the body blocks. Oliver able to turn with the stun. Oliver's going to get out. He's back to safety. DNZ is fine as well as Iron Man. And now the rotation is coming from Boogie with the Iron Shells. They're looking for kills themselves. Ice Shards. That's got the Moon Drops. It rain drops. That's going to save the Sand King. And now Boogie just giving them the slow but painful rundown. Arteezy comes back in. Throws out the Spirit Lance. Can they kill Boogie? They cannot. Both Sai is playing around oh. on very low health. I can, uh, I can tell you I did not watch any of that. I was watching the minimap. Sumail got a solo kill on the Timber Saw down there with the use of a regen rune. It was crazy. He chased them all the way back to tier 2 and back. Uh, had to use the lasso as well. So Sumail has totally dominated that lane. And losing oh. that Timber Saw so early is so painful Look for Penta. Look at this rotation from Fear. Oh, he's going to find him, too. This is the dream rotation with a Lycan. You move in straight away, and he gets a very smart double kill. Yeah, EG are just firing on all three lanes right now. Yeah. Looking very good. And uh, happy for Sumail, too. So Ark is just like come mid. He's got 0, 2, 3. Yeah, doesn't really do much in the mid lane. Can't harass the rolling death or anything like that. And again, he's going to get both of these bounty runes. Uh, Sumail is way up there. Nearing level 9. Blink dagger already done. Oliver in trouble as well as Crit and Arty's Z move forward. TP from DNC will be there. Boogie's around as well. They can look to try and fight this, at least potentially take down Crit once again on the task as they give him the rundown. And I don't think Crit's getting himself out of this one, and he certainly isn't as he pops to the Caustic Finale. Bottom lane, look at this aggression from Samel. He needs TPs, I remember, but he's not going to get them with the moves that Penta have already made elsewhere. Oliver's going to walk his way down there, but it's not anything that he can and do to save him. Uh, he's, he could be in trouble himself, Oliver. Oliver's got to be careful. Firefly is about to wear out, so that may... Keep him safe mid lane. Very close call for R because he timber changes his way. But Samael, now with these stacks, he just chases it down and he gets it. Samael is walking away with this game. Four kills on the Batrider. They really need to kill him. They may just have him with a combo of DNZ and RMN. And it looks like they should be able to punish him. The final right click flies through and they do put an end to Samael's reign. But what a time he's been having on this bottom half of the map. The bat is getting. Oh, wildly out of control. Yeah, a very important kill space for too. Yeah. Fear gets the mid tower because of it. Boogie can't even do anything as a Darkseer. Uh, and he's not ready. That's one thing about Darkseer. You know, we talked about the spend this game, but we mentioned how Darkseer has been a hero that has certainly seen a lot less play over yeah. the past year compared to the previous years. You know, that one more vacuum cooldown seemed to just kind of do it. But this build of the uh, Ion Shell and maxing the Surge has become a lot more popular as we start to see him uh, appear a bit more often. But in the end, he's still quite slow. He needs those big items. He needs items to make him feel tanky so that he can survive in the fight. He needs items for some mobility so he can get off good vacuums. Uh, certainly a very greedy guy to have on your squad. Samael, he's found himself a level 5 Sven, he's going to look to try and play around with it as well as he blinks 4, but it's a bit of a trap, there's 4 heroes on Penta and Samael, oh he had a great start, but that's a second kill uh, that he's given up in quick succession, Fear has come forward, he's looking towards Oliver, Oliver slowed down, turn with the stern, arms the army of wolves, and will be able to get himself out of there, but Samael, as good of a start as he's had, he's got to be careful of, of giving away these kills, because these are some of the higher value kills that Penta could take at this stage. Yeah, he's doing the whole uh, Broodmother Pinata thing down there. You get crazy ahead and everything, you feed a few kills away in a row, and suddenly it's like you were never uh, anywhere up in the first place. So, Meanwhile, through all of this, a familiar theme remains from the previous game. Arteezy sits in a lane. Yeah. Uh, he has not creeps. Yeah. Doing a great job at it. Slaying them all like that catapult. Oh, doesn't stand a chance. Oh, God, the bloodshed. And we'll see if he follows through on this. He's actually uh, queuing up the Diffusal Blade first this game. So, obviously, skipping the Battle Fury that we have seen. Uh, being pretty much the favorable build among PLs at the moment in this current meta. So, we'll, we'll see if he sticks through that. And obviously, with the Diffusal Blade earlier, that is going to add to his fighting potential. And maybe they realized that was the problem last game. You know, too much time focused on hitting the creeps and not enough time making use of the hero in fights. Bottom lane, another kill for Samael as he gets himself back on a roll as DNC is out alone, trying to find that solo XP in that farm towards his first key items. 
can't believe they're behind in kills. It's felt like the past couple minutes have just been so much for EG, but just uh, a little bit in the early side for Penta. They took a lot right at the beginning, but EG, of course, getting the more valuable ones as the game progresses. And they will once again march this bottom tower. They had a Dragonite last Look game. Look at Samael going. He's there straight away with the control tower. Remember, it looks like there's just no follow-up. And in fact, Fear, he's now the one in trouble. Four heroes around him. Fear's down. And, I mean, Samael went in, but it looks like Crit didn't want to follow up that deep under the tower. Yeah. And uh, uh, miscommunication, it has to be. Otherwise, Samael, he wouldn't go for that play if he realized his team was going to bail like that. Felt pretty aggressive when Lycan yeah. didn't have his ulti yet either. It was still on cooldown. It just came back up a few seconds ago. So, fear of perhaps just not expecting them to be so close. But I will say, the aggression in this game has been crazy. Like, last game, they had a safe lane Dragonite. Like, that's what fear was playing. And yeah. he still hasn't been able to move around to towers or anything like that when he was playing that hero. Now, when you look at this Lycan, he's just all over the place. Uh, trying to create more space for uh, Arteezy, much like last game, but think about how Sumail was farmed and unable to do anything with it before. This is a much better look for EG. It's giving them a bigger lead than they had previously. And uh, there, there is still that question, though, of just like, what can Arteezy actually contribute this game? Will it be something uh, a bit more active, or will he just continue to be this wave clearer? 10, 10, 8, Arteezy. Closing in on that Diffuser Blade. Oliver and uh, well, four members of Penta, they, they are looking up towards that top lane. He's uh, he's struggling. Yeah. He has 3,600 net worth on a spend at 13 minutes. His levels aren't looking too hot either. It's. I mean, the thing is, because RTZ is going for the Diffusal Blade build and not the Battle Fury, if this game does turn into a more passive farm fest, if Penta can allow it to do so, Oliver, he can definitely... He was just unable to do on the puck in the last uh, on the last time around, but now on the bat, a bit more of a, a better solo killing potential as we've seen with the, the firefly and the sticky napalm usage and the constant way that he's been chasing down here. As, as it's cost him his life a couple of times, but overall, strong stuff from the Samael Batrider. It felt like uh, at one point Peta just kind of gave up and let that matchup of the Batrider and the Timber stick, and Samael just abused the hell out of it with that bottle. Like, going back and watching that, I think it's going to look like one of the, the best performances so far in terms of what Samael's been able to achieve in this offlane maneuver. And uh, he, he got that 1v1, you know? This is the thing that he's been looking for, trying to find this way where he can, like, outskill, outthink his opponent. And I would say that's exactly what happened here. He had the favorable matchup anyway, but just so much experience from Bounty Runes on a Batrider like that is just absurd. And then able to solo kill the Timber Slot after that. And Z? I have the vision, that's the question. Could use some dust, though. That, there's been a few of these, yeah. I will say. You know, all, all things aside, that oh. might be one, a good thing to oh, add. Oh, they've still got him, though. <laughs> they have got the Fiends group. Yeah, so they will be able to catch him, trying to sneak away with the Burrow Strike. Up top, Fear actually looking for a, uh, a bit of a kill potential to our remember, but he's going to back off. He's a little too scared of what potentially hides behind that less right? 
Well, this is the fear of old, though, man. 16 and a half minutes in, 8.3k. Yeah, it's classic play. Necro 3, done. So much control over the Roche Pit now, too, with that Bat Rider. They just get a single pick, they can hop and shred it instantly, or they can just apply a ton of pressure on any of these Tier 2s. I like that circle from Sumail. He's just kind of eyeing up that whole area around, like, basically from Tier 2 top to Tier 2 mid, and then in toward that Radiant Jungle. That's where he wants the vision. Because that's where he knows these heroes from Penta are going to be lurking, lingering. They want to find some farm for themselves, try and push out waves. And so he wants to get these big jumps with the Blink from there. And, I mean, as we've seen, he can kill many of these heroes on his own. If Misery's there with a Fiend's Grip there, they can definitely kill oh, any of the heroes dude, on Penta's side. They're stacking the Radiant Ancients. That's how you know this game is not going well. Like, <laughs> not a good sign. Not easy, with that Diffusal Blade finished. We'll see how uh, how he does decide to play it in terms of getting involved. Oh, see on the Diffusal in turn, instead of the old Battle of Fury. Do they have detection? They... They're, they're yeah, they got the Snowball oh, across. Go. There we go, that works as well. I just love the Burrow Strike. However, EG should be able to chase this with the Shards and the Flame Break knockback. DNZ will go down. Another kill for Samael on his bat rider. No need for detection. No, that must just be cheating, I think, you know? And you gotta pay 180 for detection, so often you say, okay, well, the kills pay for themselves because you get some gold back, but honestly, if you just get the kills anyway, that's well, fine. And mid lane, they're looking for another one, EG. They have to set up Fiend's Grips there to hold down this big old Timber Saw. They'll be punched up. He's got a little bit of mana left, but it's not enough. He's down, top lane fear, actually popping the ult, trying to fight around Boogie and Oliver. Oliver will hold down the, uh, the army. In fact, pops the gold strength to farm uh, those tasty, tasty Necro. Or at least just the one of them, as it seems. Yep. I like the way Fear just kind of like puts on that pressure, but then he backs away. He doesn't want to commit too hard. He doesn't want to give anything to spend. They can tell he's struggling, you know? They've had a lot of vision on the rating side of the map. They know he hasn't been farming up all that much. Uh, and he's still pretty far behind. I would say a decent comeback so far for himself, but nowhere near where Sven wants to be at this point in the game. It's going to take a, a fair bit of time. The question is if EG are going to give it to them, because already they're 5k in the lead. They have this insane pushing power, this insane aggression, and the way that Smail is just constantly invading Penta's half of the map. Oh, and it's the poor gold on the dire this game, too, for EG. It's the Blink Dagger already done for our Tusk, and that is so huge against Sven. Their big comeback in this game is the Vacuum and, and the big they got the Strike. Wombo. Yeah, yeah, they got a Wombo, but it's crit. He's the combo breaker. He's going to blink on in there, throw up a snowball, everyone inside, and waste all this time during Sven's ulti. Uh, they'll have to be careful about some of the follow-up plays from that, though, because they do have some decent AoE to counter the snowball and everything as yeah. they, they come back out, but overall, I would call that a pretty big win for the side of EG. But at There's, the same time, double blinks. That's the blinks, yeah. This is the, the this is a massive go time. I mean, they've got level 2 on Oliver. Sure, he's not incredibly farm. Yep. Level 2 God Strength with the combo. You can definitely cut through EG's lineup. You do need a perfect jump in, but with those two blinks, that's, that's double the chance of, of getting those, those heroes caught out. So we'll see what they can do with this. At the moment, Oliver just pushing out bottom, hoping to sort of bait EG into the neighborhood. This uh, fight is very scary, though, because even if they, let's say they kill Fear instantly, the catch from the side of EG is very strong. You've got this blink with a snowball from crit. Yeah, you've got a bat rider who's going to be flying all through. You've got uh, a PL who can keep up very well yeah. uh, using the uh, phantom rush as well as just doppelgangers. So they uh, they basically want that kill and they need to like retreat as a unit or like five man push and like keep on that aggression. Like keep casting their spells. Don't miss anything because one slip up and they could be like fully five man wiped after uh, even a pick on to uh, fear, I would say. We'll see here, Oliver putting some pressure on with the god strength to the tier one tower. EG not really falling for the bait, as it were. I think they're, they, they should the be aware that there's backup already behind. Done, so. oh, it's easy. I'm feeling very safe for that Aegis. Crit, I know it's going to catch with the Ice Shine. In fact, well, Crit's going to be the one to be jumped on on the back lines. He's got the Snowball by himself sometime. He'll actually be able to connect the first turn onto Artizi. And we'll be able to follow through, though, as the rest of EG come in. Misery has the Fiend's Grip, holding this turn in place. That's Oliver down. Timbersaw also falling low. Can he get himself out of this one? No, he can't. That's a double kill for Artizi. And he's not done yet. EG chased towards DNZ as he tries to hide in the jungle, but he cannot do so. Three kills for evil geniuses as they manage to climb further and further ahead getting the Roche, getting a very, very successful team fight as they were, seemed very aware of the play that Penta were going for, you know, pushing solo with Sven and hiding. They knew that there was going to be a surprise. They knew that there was going to be an ambush and EG were able to punish it. Yeah, looking very good this game. Been much more aggressive, got a lot more goal, a much bigger lead, 20 minutes, of course. And with that Roche secured so early, oh. like this game is so hard for Penta. And this should be another one. There is the rest of EG coming in. Crit with the control onto Arno, man. 
got the knockback with the flame break, and RTZ picks up another kill. And I think, yeah, I think it's just sort of the way that EG's read the series. They know that you know, RTZ, if he gets involved, you know, he's a smart kid. They, they can play some, some fantastic team fights. In the last game, he just, he was hitting creeps, you know. It felt like a wasted opportunity. You want to be brawling in, in these games, you know, when the enemy team wants to fight as much as they do. And uh, getting the Diffusal Blade first this game rather than the Battle Fury has uh, certainly made things a, a lot easier so far for EG. And that and fear. Like, neither of them yeah. were involved last game, really. Yeah. At yeah. least in the, the more important parts of the game where Sumail needed someone to help him get kills to actually accelerate that puck. This game, his Batrider not only played well solo uh, and again won his lane, uh, but he got a little bit of assistance too for those quick pickoffs. Try and take them just a little bit further ahead of Penta. So uh, you look at this lineup from Penta and you're like, okay, now I've seen these games. Okay, I've seen comebacks. And you know who's in a comeback game? Darkseer, the vacuum. You know who else is there? Sven. He cleaves through five people all at once. Timbersaw, he can be pretty annoying. He split pushes, he helps keep out the waves. Uh, but those kind of games don't tend to happen, I would say, against more of the like, experienced teams. So you can kind of expect EG to be a little bit more chill on this one, I would imagine. Oh, can I get it in time? <sighs> So close, nearly getting. That's impressive. Boys out. At the same time, though, Artiz he finds himself kill there with the help. Yeah, has fears actually pushing in onto Boogie. Boogie, in a way, fortification does get forced out as well uh, from the side of Penta. So this is it. Really is as you say. It's all about the wombo combo. Can they land it? It's going to be incredibly hard to do so. And the worst part is that means your opponents generally have to screw up. Oh, the flame break! Oh, knocks him back mid timber chain. He's not getting out of there. Samael with more than enough control. As this game is looking to fall quite quickly out of hand for Penta as they're 11k behind. 20 to 12 as EG take the lead. Oliver will be fine for now as it seems as he gets himself back up to the high ground. Uh, EG surely going to be looking to threatening the base of Penta very, very shortly. What do we have to kind of force them into these poor decisions? We have the double blink, I guess, from yeah. the Darkseer and the Sand King. So if there's any sort of a dive from fear, but he's got that big BKB now too. So the Wombo combo, that, that's a pretty good combo breaker too, I hear. Nice and golden toasty. First strike on Twilight's easy, but Penta uh, going to be thinking very hard before making any sort of commitment outside of their high ground now. It's very scary to leave their base. They're probably back away from the computers again. And they've got the whiteboard and they're trying to draw up how this is going to work yeah. out. You know, one guy's just kind of moving guys around the, Someone's got the to base, the so it looks okay, but yeah, they're doing some serious calculations here as to how they're going to win this one. They should try that DDoS strat. I thought that was looking pretty good that from EG. Pretty good, yeah, from yeah. EG came one. They, they should have Nearly continued that strategy. Darks here. What a hero. What nearly, a nearly, nearly got the Greaves, hasn't he? I think yeah. he's pretty much got the money for the recipe on a uh, yeah, VAs. If that's just coming out to him right now. Only aura is all the bus for the team. Oliver would love to have his blink as well. That's one thing about getting the combo with the uh, Darks here and the Sand King. Yeah, I've got the spend in place, it's not going to do too much. Walls, that's going to be dropped. Uh, the stun onto one, he's trying to move forward towards Misery, but the Enfeebles out. Misery slides himself away. Can they actually kill the Bane? I don't think they can. He turns around, he's got the Fiend's group. Crit, the one to be falling low, Wall. He's actually going to live. They can't quite bring him down, and now the turnaround's going to be there for EG, surely. Penta, Oliver, falling low. They do manage to pop the Aegis of Arteezy, but can they actually kill him a second time? They'll get the two-man stun from RMN, and they're simply looking to try and disengage. RMN, can he get out of there? DNZ comes back in with a burst drive. Found with it. The Magic Mouse massive amounts of magical damage, brings Samael very low, but not quite low enough. Samael's going to survive. There's four dead on Penta. None of them have buyback. They'll just tap out. GG is called, and we are going to a game three as EG step things up for game two. And as you say, RTZ and Fear step it up. Samael, but he had a pretty solid game in game one, wasn't able to do too much of it because his other cause couldn't really contribute, but this game was an absolute different story. This time, all three of them were able to just do so much. He also turned the jersey around the right way this it, time. That's true. That probably that's, is what really turned yeah, this one around, thing. I think. This team wasn't quite as confused as to who that guy was yeah. playing on the PC, but Penta, I would have been extremely impressed if they won this game I was with that draft. Dark, so yeah, it's, yeah. Like, 